Hello and welcome to RadScope. My name is Dr. Ramzan. I'm a radiologist working in NHS. This is the second video of uh, rectal MRI anatomy. As promised, we are going to talk about mesorectal fascia, vascular supply of the rectum, as well as the lymphatic drainage. Let's quickly first recap what we learned about anterior peritoneal reflection. As we discussed previously, this is a thin layer of visceral peritoneum, which plays a key role in separating the rectal intraperitoneal and extraperitoneal parts. In our last video, we saw how the peritoneal reflection can be identified on the sagittal images in the male patients just above the seminal vesicles. And I told you that I'll show you in another video where the peritoneal reflection we can see in females. So this is a scan of a female patient. And uh, if you remember, we said that in females, the peritoneal reflection is identified at the level of the cul de sac or pouch of Douglas. So do you see this thin hypointense signal band just above the cul de sac? So this is the, you can see that this is the uterus, this is part of the cervix, and you can see that this is cul de sac and you can see the peritoneal reflection just above it. So that's where the peritoneal reflection reflects over the upper part of the rectum to then move on to cover rest of the pelvis. Once again, we can correlate it with axial images. So these are the thin section axial images and these are the coronal images. And uh, let's put our cursor over here. Okay, so do you see this thin st structure which is sort of uh, hanging down into the pelvis? That's the peritoneal reflection. And on the coronal image, you can see this corresponds to that seagull shaped structure. So while you can probably notice that the peritoneal reflection in this patient is better visible than the previous patient, or well, the reason could be there's a bit of fluid around it, which is sort of making it more prominent. We talked about the importance of peritoneal reflection in the previous video. We said that peritoneal reflection is important for several reasons. One of them was the peritoneal reflection separates the intraperitoneal part of the rectum from the extraperitoneal part. So if you remember the sigmoid takeoff, uh, it is this part of the sigmoid colon where it sort of takes off and moves away from the sacrum. And the small part of the rectum above the peritoneal reflection is the intraperitoneal part and the part below is the extraperitoneal part. So the so this distinction between the intra and extra peritoneal parts of the rectum is important because uh, the tumors that involve the intra peritoneal part of the rectum more easily and quickly infiltrate into the peritoneum directly through this peritoneal reflection. And that is why involvement of the peritoneal reflection makes the disease T4A. So the second important fact about the peritoneal reflection is the peritoneal reflection marks the uppermost margin of the mesorectal fascia. So mesorectal fascia along the anterior wall of the rectum is only found below the peritoneal reflection, which is different from the posterior wall of the rectum where it goes through and through. So once you identify the peritoneal reflection, you can see that this thin band below the level of peritoneal reflection is the anterior mesorectal fascia, while the posterior mesorectal fascia would cover whole of the rectum. And we can again see them on the axial images as well. So this is our peritoneal reflection. And if we go down, sorry. Um, so this is our peritoneal reflection. And as we go down after this, this thin layer anteriorly is the mesorectal fascia. And you can see that the mesorectal fascia is covering the rectum all around the rectum and perirectal fat in this part but as we go up you can sort of see that there is an another layer that has taken over and this is the peritoneal reflection so what is basically mesorectal fascia rectal fascia is a thin fibrous layer that surrounds the rectum as well as this perirectal fat so one important consideration of mesorectal fascia is to understand its relation with anterior peritoneal reflection the other important thing is to grossly understand the anatomy of the rectal fascia is a thin fibrous layer that surrounds the rectum as well as this perirectal fat. So, mesorectal fat and the mesorectal fascia. If you just look at it as a whole, 
what do you see really? Here you can see that the thickness of the mesorectal fat is different all around the rectum. For instance, it's quite wide over here, slightly less thickness posteriorly, but anteriorly particularly, the thickness of the mesorectal fat has significantly reduced, which means that the tumors that involve the anterior part of the rectum are more likely to invade into the mesorectal fascia. And as we go further down, it becomes actually so very difficult to see mesorectal fascia separate from the, um, the outer wall of the uh, vagina and the cervix. So that is why the tumors that involve the lower part of the rectum, as particularly if they are anterior tumors, they are more likely to invade the adjacent structures and to have T4 disease. The involvement of the mesorectal fascia does not affect the T stage of the tumor. So whenever the mesorectal fascia is involved, whether it's a T3 tumor or T4 tumor, then uh, uh, we just need to mention in the report that the MRF is positive. Some people write CRM, but as we discussed before, MRF would be a better expression. So I hope on these images in this video, it would be clear to you how, the, how to assess the mesorectal fascia, its relations, and the value of understanding the thickness of mesorectal fat in various parts of the rectum around its circumference. Now let's shift our focus to the arterial and venous ply of the rectum. The rectum is plied by superior, middle and inferior rectal arteries. They sort of form a arterial network around the rectum. The superior rectal artery is the branch of inferior mesenteric artery, which if you remember is the direct branch from the aorta. So where do we find superior rectal artery on MRI of the rectum? Well, a superior rectal artery is actually very well visible in the presacral space. And if you have, these are the superior rectal vessels, the vein uh, runs posterior to the artery. And if you have a difficulty identifying them, you can always uh, look at the thick section T2 weighted images. And uh, I mean, this is as high as we can go on these images. So. So as you can see that this is the inferior mesenteric artery and uh, you can actually put a cursor on it and then follow it through. In the presacral space, you can see that um, this is the inferior mesenteric artery and then its terminal branch is the superior rectal artery. And the superior rectal vein runs parallel to the superior rectal artery. It would be slightly on the left side and uh, posteriorly. So this posterior thing is the uh, superior rectal vein. On the axial images, you can see that this is the artery and this is the vein. The distal part of the rectum would have uh, further blood supply from middle and inferior rectal arteries. And uh, these arteries are not as important as the superior rectal artery, but the middle rectal artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery and the inferior rectal artery is a branch of the pudendal artery. Let's talk about the venous drainage of the rectum now. The upper two thirds of the rectum is drained by the superior rectal vein that we have already discussed. It runs alongside the um, superior rectal artery. And this then ultimately drains into the inferior mesenteric vein, which if you remember is the part of the portal venous system. The lower third of the rectum is, however, drained by the middle and inferior rectal veins, which then drain into the internal iliac vein, which, if you remember, are part of the systemic circulation. So the tumor involving the upper part of the rectum is more likely to metastasize to liver as opposed to the lower part of the rectum, which is more likely to metastasize to, say, lungs because of their different venous drainage pathways. Now comes the lymphatic drainage of the rectal cancers. Well, a lot of the lymphatic vessels that um, drain the rectum, they uh, run alongside the superior rectal artery and vein. This also has an important implication because the tumors that involve the rectum tend to have a greater number of lymph node deposits along the posterior and lateral aspects of the rectum. It is because of this pathway of the lymphatics. Now, in, an, uh, in an, another video, we will talk about uh, the size criteria and the morphology of the lymph nodes um, in order to differentiate the pathological lymph nodes from the hyperplastic and normal lymph nodes. Well, another important fact to discuss here is the, uh, the tumors that arise below the peritoneal reflection. They have um, another pathway for lymphatic drainage, which is along the middle rectal vessels, which means that the tumors which arise below the peritoneal reflection can potentially go to what we call 
lateral lymph nodes. These lymph nodes involve the pelvic sidewall lymph nodes, obturator, internal and external iliac lymph nodes. Now, I mean, theoretically speaking, these lymph nodes are still local regional lymph nodes. But when we stage the rectal tumors, we describe these lymph nodes separately. The reason is these lymph nodes are outside the traditional plane of total mesorectal excision. And we need to specifically mention in our reports if there are pathological pelvic sidewall lymph nodes so that surgeons and the radiation oncologists know um, that there is disease outside the mesorectal fascia and uh, for the surgeons would then need to extend their surgery along the pelvic sidewall and obviously for radiation oncologists they would need to give localized radiotherapy to these lymph nodes so just to wrap our today's discussion the we talked about the peritoneal reflection how its location varies between males and females and its relation with mesorectal fascia. We also talked about the um, mesorectal fascia and mesorectal fat and how its thickness varies um, along the circumference of the rectum. Then we talked about the arterial spli and the venous drainage and uh, how to identify the superior rectal vessels. We also talked about the importance of the pelvic sidewall lymph nodes. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like, share and subscribe for more content. For any questions or feedback, feel free to drop a comment below. Until next time, happy learning.